I want to bring in now uh, David Schuster, political reporter, and Joseph Penny, and GOP strategist. Guys, thanks so much for, for coming back in. Um, let's talk about borders really quick because we just heard that um, uh, Canada and the United States are going to close their uh, traffic border there. Um, we're hearing about the southern border possible closures as well. Is this the right move right now as we each day find more new cases of the coronavirus? Well, look, you got people being told here in New York to possibly shelter in place. We've got um, kind of these kind of non-mandatory quarantines all across this country. Um, if the idea is to say that we have to crush the curve um, by having limited contact, then absolutely we should close our northern border, we should close our southern border. I would say we should even go as far as possibly grounding all planes indefinitely. Um, if we're going to take this seriously to make sure that our health care system doesn't get inundated, I think these are the proactive steps that we need to take. David. And that includes <clears throat> sheltering in place and all the other steps. I mean, to Joe's point, it's not as if we're going to be able to stamp out every coronavirus cluster. I mean, at this point, most Americans probably acknowledge that, no, we can't do that. But what we can do is if we know that 60, 70 million people are going to be exposed, let's have it in intervals so that we still give people a chance to get cured when they go to the hospital as opposed to the situation in Italy where they're having to choose between three or four people and which one gets to be on the ventilator. That's not the situation you want in the United States. So if we can delay people's exposure by a couple of weeks, by a couple of months, you give more people an opportunity to survive. You know, it, it is tough because you, you kind of touched on this, Joe, about possible domestic flight closures and canceling those. How, how how close are we to that? What do you think, and based on what you've seen so far? I mean, look, first and foremost, I think that, you know, politicians would be actually doing the airlines a favor um, in shutting down those flights, because I think, again, it would have a government-mandated reason for those flights to be canceled. You have most of these airlines, I mean, I had a friend, friend flying down to Florida, there were five people on the plane, yeah. right? So you have airlines that are hemorrhaging cash right now by keeping those planes in the air to meet those obligations. I think right now, in the interest of safety, get the planes on the ground, get the people in their homes. Homes, yeah. and let's make sure that we're taking care of business. Well, David, one of those phases of, of these packages that are in Congress right now has to do with an airline bailout. I think it's $50 billion allocated for them, if I'm not mistaken. What do we, what do we think about this? And I want to ask you, set it up this way, because the airline industry for the past, I think, decade now has seen some massive profiting. Yeah. And they're seeing a decline right now. Is a bailout, a bailout appropriate for them? Well, it's going to be hard for most Americans to stomach because not only have they had record profits, but they also benefited from the corporate tax cuts that President Trump was able to pass a, a year and a half, two years ago. And most of these corporations, whether you're talking about airlines or other multi-billion dollar uh, industry titans, what they did is they engaged in buying their own stock, stock buybacks. They weren't exactly investing in new equipment or new employees or new technology or providing uh, wage increases to their workers. Workers. So now all of a sudden their profits are getting hammered and we all agree the profits are getting hammered. But wait a second. We have a lot of Americans been saying, well, what was going on for the past couple of years? Shouldn't you have been better prepared? Mm -hmm. And it also raises the political argument of, well, you have socialism for giant corporations and you have very harsh capitalism for everybody else. Now, that may be oversimplifying it, but a lot of Americans are going to look up and say, well, wait a second. Why are all these corporations getting all of this aid when I just lost my job as a waitress or as a bartender or, yeah. or working, working as a cashier? I mean, I have to, we're having a rare day here. I, I, I agree with David. I mean, I, I'm thinking of the the old uh, Barry White song, Let the Music Play, I'm sitting here saying, let the airlines die. Right? If we're going to get back to a new, innovative airline industry, there's a line of billionaires around the block who'd be willing to buy off airlines for parts right now. And you know who they're going to hire? Flight attendants with actual experience. Right? So if we want to get back to that great air era of aviation with Pan Am and all those different things, a new type of business model, then we have to be prepared to say that airlines have been saddled with debt. They've been run poorly. We've been propping them up. And now in this time of need, I think it might be time to just face the writing on the wall and hit the reset button. Yeah. And if there is a fear that Wall Street is melting down, that whether it's the airlines or other industries that are taking it on the chin, I mean, as Joe and I were talking in the green room, and he made the point, we shut down Wall Street for a week after 9-11. There's nothing that says you can't do that now and say, okay, until we figure out a plan, uh -huh. let's stop the trading, let's stop the markets, let's figure out what we're going to do in Congress, and then open up Wall Street for trading when everybody has a clear idea of what the official government Joe, response is going to be. I think, look, it's already shut down trading in the Philippines. I mean, right now, you look at it again. We went from 9-11 that didn't even open up Wall Street on 9-11 for obvious reasons. It was shut down until the 17th of September, right? So we give yourself the time 
times to calm the markets, show people that there's a plan in place. Uh -huh. We're right now in this kind of ad hoc thing where we look, it appears to the average American that we're throwing things against the wall. We've got people on tel TV telling the average American to buy in the dips. This is not a dip period. We're literally on a race to the bottom if we don't have that massive actual infrastructure put in place to help the average American on Main Street and help those, old, those small businesses survive this period. We have got to Rupert. disagree on something today. Yeah. So it's who's, not who's got the better it's, looking tie this morning? Not Joe Kenny or David Schuster? I think both of you are complimentary at this point. The orange and the sky blue there. You can fill my pink in with you guys. Oh guys, thanks so much. David Schuster, political reporter, yeah. and Joseph Penny, a GOP strategist. We appreciate your time.